Hello, and welcome to Juvenile Court and Healthcare, Consequences You Should Know. This short presentation provides an overview of healthcare issues for youth who are involved in the juvenile justice system. Today's presenters are Karen Piller, who is a staff attorney at the nonprofit organization Teen Child, and myself, Kelly Vomaka. I'm a public defense attorney in juvenile court. The topics we'll cover will include how to get health care in the community, how to get health care in county detention and at state institutions, what the Medicaid consequences are of being in custody, and how to get drug and alcohol treatment in the juvenile justice system. Staying healthy, both physically and mentally, can actually help prevent contacts with the juvenile justice system. Youth who feel healthy are more likely to attend school regularly and make smarter choices when faced with stressful situations or pressure. The juvenile justice system is not a good place to turn to for physical and mental health needs. And in fact, a person's physical and mental health condition can worsen based on involvement in the juvenile justice system. Being arrested, locked up, going through court hearings, and having a criminal record can all be trauma-inducing experiences. Here in Washington, all youth have access to health care, even if their family is low income. Also, teens as young as 13 can seek mental health care from outpatient community agencies without needing a parent's permission. It is very important that all youth see a primary care doctor at least once a year to stay healthy. Seeing a doctor regularly, and a dentist if possible, will help you feel good and also will give you a chance to discuss any health concerns that you have. Doctors can answer questions about physical development, contraception, sexually transmitted diseases, and alcohol or drug use. Staying healthy and talking to a doctor can help make other aspects of your life go more smoothly, like keeping up with school, getting medications that you need, and staying safe. This is especially important for teenagers because they grow so quickly during this time. To help pay for doctor's visits, medical insurance is available for almost all youth. Many children and teenagers are eligible for health care insurance whether or not their parents work. Medical insurance is also available for children and teens who don't have social security numbers. To explore medical insurance options, look at the Health Plan Finder. This website helps to figure out what free or low-cost medical insurance is available and how much insurance will cover the cost of medical care or treatment. Studies have shown that up to two-thirds of the young people that are arrested and placed in detention centers meet the criteria for having a mental disorder. This is more than twice the rate of the general population. If mental stability is a concern, it is important to act now and seek mental health services in the community before having contact with the juvenile justice system. Many youth will qualify for free or low-cost mental health treatment in Washington, even if they do not have insurance. If you know someone who may be suffering from depression, anxiety, post-traumatic stress disorder, or attention deficit hyperactivity disorder, or other mental health conditions, help them seek treatment first. Don't wait for their behavior to lead them to police or juvenile justice contacts. Community mental health agencies allow young people starting at 13 to access outpatient mental health care without needing an adult or parent to initiate treatment. To start getting mental health services, call your local mental health crisis line in your county or if it's an emergency, call 911. 
There is also a 24-hour-a-day, seven-day-a-week phone line for referrals, support, and help in accessing mental health treatment. The Washington Recovery Helpline at 866-789-1500. On the right side of your screen, you'll find a link to this video, which provides more details about seeking mental health care. If you need assistance finding mental health providers or crisis lines in your geographic area, DSHS provides a statewide directory. You can navigate to this website by clicking on Mental Health Services and Information in the website box on the right-hand side of your screen. Many youth and families worry that health care won't be available if the youth is locked up in a county or state facility. But youth in custody can access health care. In fact, access to health care is a constitutional right, no matter if the person is detained at a county detention facility or at a state-run institution, such as Echo Glen, Nacelle, or Green Hill. These institutions are operated by Juvenile Rehabilitation, which is a department of the Washington State Department of Social and Health Services, or DSHS. The state facilities share the same health care standards, which are online. We've provided a link on the right side of your screen. But healthcare standards in county detention facilities vary from location to location. When a youth is first admitted into a detention facility, he or she should receive a health screening. This screening typically includes medical, mental health, and dental examinations and treatment for any conditions that require attention right away. Youth can be examined and treated without parental consent if immediate intervention is required or if the staff cannot obtain parental consent. The youth can object to health care treatment with some exceptions. Youth do have access to prescription medications while in detention, but the parent or guardian usually needs to bring the prescription to the facility first. If the youth hasn't been locked up yet, but will be, and they take medication on a regular basis, please notify the defense attorney, the court, and the probation counselor beforehand so that necessary arrangements can be made. The types of treatment typically include care for injuries and illnesses, drug and alcohol treatment, and treatment for sexually transmitted diseases. Doctors can prescribe medication to youth in county detention facilities and at state institutions. Emergency health care must be provided, including calling 911. Girls who are pregnant can access prenatal care and maternity services, and all girls can access menstrual hygiene materials such as tampons. For all youth, Counselors are available for mental health issues such as depression, post-traumatic stress disorder, and suicidal thoughts. All mental health treatment is private. It will not be revealed to your parents, lawyers, probation counselor, detention staff, or other detained youth. And anyone who is 13 or older does not need parental permission to receive mental health care. All of these services will be provided in the most appropriate setting, which could be in the institution or at a community facility. If you're concerned about the quality or availability of health care, the nonprofit agency, Disability Rights Washington, works to protect the health care rights of people in detention facilities, jails, and prisons. Their website has a lot of information about the health care rights of incarcerated people, including juveniles. They also take complaints if health care is not adequate or if you are concerned about the health of an incarcerated person.
Youth who are involved in the juvenile justice system may receive specific mental health related treatment through the court. In many counties, youth can qualify for targeted types of treatment that address specific behaviors, such as anger management, functional family therapy, sexual offenses, or chemical dependency. Many juvenile justice programs also offer interventions like aggression replacement therapy and family therapy to help youth learn healthy ways to address anger and build healthier families. However, not all juvenile court systems will offer these types of special services. That is why youth and their families should reach out to the community mental health system to seek services outside of the juvenile justice system. If a youth currently has a mental health provider, that provider can visit him or her while in a county detention facility. On the other hand, if the youth is placed at a state institution, he or she is unlikely to continue seeing that provider. The state institutions have staff who are trained to provide cognitive behavioral therapy, a form of therapy that addresses thinking errors and making better choices. Lesbian, gay, bisexual, transgender, questioning, intersex, and gender nonconforming youth are entitled to receive fair and equal treatment at state institutions. This right is protected by a comprehensive policy that spells out how the staff must treat each youth and support them in their identity. For example, staff must maintain confidentiality about LGBTQI identity, and they must support youth by providing appropriate clothing, by providing safety while showering, and by using the name that the youth prefers. Each state institution has a grievance and complaint process for any youth who feels harassed or even assaulted due to their sexual identity. Youth in county detention facilities are also entitled to be treated fairly, but there is no standard statewide policy. In Washington, no one can be discriminated against based on gender or identity. Therefore, if a youth feels mistreated in a county detention facility, they can seek legal counsel or make a complaint through the facility's complaint process. One thing to keep in mind is that a young person's Medicaid coverage, like Apple Health or Provider One, will likely be suspended if he or she is in custody for more than 30 days. That coverage can be reinstated when the youth gets out and returns to the community. To re-enroll, the youth will have to apply through Apple Health for Kids website or call 1-877-543-7669. The cost of health care in detention and state institutions may be covered by insurance, but the facility may also seek reimbursement from the family for some supplemental health care. Many youth who are involved in the juvenile justice system need substance abuse treatment, such as for alcohol, marijuana, and other drugs. In some cases, the courts order chemical dependency assessments and, if necessary, treatment. The county probation counselor or the state institution helps to set this up. The judge can also impose a special kind of sentence called a chemical dependency disposition alternative, or CDDA, or CEDA for short. If the youth does not comply with the assessment or treatment, the judge can lock them up as a consequence. Placing youth in detention might be an appealing option for some courts and parents, especially when they fear for the youth's safety. But incarceration also has downsides. It can be physically unsafe for the chemically addicted youth to suddenly transition away or detox from certain drugs. Detention does not typically have the appropriate medical staff to monitor this. Also, simply not having access to drugs does not address the underlying reasons for drug use in the first place, 
and it does not teach the youth how to resist drug use in the future. And finally, being locked up can itself cause stress and even trauma that lead the youth to start using again as soon as they get out. So in general, incarceration is of only limited value in addressing addiction. Some counties offer treatment programs through drug court, which is different from regular court. Thirteen counties in Washington have a juvenile drug court program. If a youth successfully completes the requirements, which include treatment, regular court appearances, and restitution, if any, they graduate and the charges are dismissed. In some cases, the question of the youth's mental health comes up in court. It might be brought up because it relates to the youth's mental health while going through the court procedures or because it relates to the youth's mental state at the time of the crime. The legal terms you'll often hear are competency or insanity plea. Keep in mind that these legal concepts are different from an actual diagnosis of mental illness. There's a lot of overlap, but mental illness is a medical diagnosis and competency and insanity are legal determinations. One is made by a doctor and the other one is made by a judge. So for example, you can have a diagnosed mental illness, but a judge can still find you competent to stand trial. These issues come up most frequently when mental illness may have had an influence on the youth's behavior and the resulting criminal charges. For some of these youth, they may have been already diagnosed with a mental health condition. But for others, it might be new. They might not have been diagnosed before, and they are now facing mental health issues and treatment for the first time while also going through the juvenile justice system. Please check out the downloadable resources and web links provided on this web page to get more information, protect your rights, and receive medical care. You can access physical and mental health treatment in the community without having to get involved with the juvenile court system. And if you are locked up, you have a right to health care while in any county facility or state institution. Taking care of your health needs is an important way to prevent contact with the juvenile justice system. If you have had juvenile court contact in the past, make sure you are paying attention to your health needs now so that you can avoid further involvement in the future.